Any given night, more than 5,000 people are living on the streets here in southern Nevada. More than 10,000 will experience homelessness at some point each year. That's right. In 13, Chief Investigator Darcy Spears continues her report on how a solution that's helped thousands of people in dozens of other cities has been rejected right here in our valley. I can put my belongings down. I'm safe. I don't have to be around pimps. I don't have to be around dope pushers. A roof over your head. A door you can lock and a sense of safety. That's what advocates say is fundamental to breaking out of homelessness. Well, being homeless is, is a struggle. Many exist in constant survival mode. Homelessness itself is a full-time job. Eric DeBure is co-founder of community-supported shelters in Eugene, Oregon. You have to think about where you're going to eat that day, how you're going to, you know, clean your clothes, how you're going to move around your stuff, how you're going to protect your stuff, where you're going to sleep, how you're going to rest. And it's tough, you know, because you're, you're treated like nothing in the streets. The idea of providing tiny shelters to the homeless isn't new. They've been doing it in Eugene for nearly a decade. By providing with um, for people a place to have a, a locking safe place where they can have some stuff and, and sleep, that eliminates a lot of the work of being homelessness and people can start to, um, you know, get their head on straight and thinking about, okay, what next steps can I take to improve my situation. Eugene's first community was established in 2013 and now from coast to coast dozens of cities are embracing a variety of tiny home solutions. There are numerous sites in the Los Angeles area. Denver has them too. They're in Kansas City, Detroit and Nashville, Tampa, Florida and Syracuse, New York. There's even this one in Reno. But here in Clark County on April 12th, the city of North Las Vegas bulldozed a group of tiny homes built on private property. And then once you came in through the entrance. Property owned by Joseph Lankowski and his group New Leaf. It's where Angela, Savage, and Alan. It was a blessing. It was a blessing. We're beginning to rebuild their lives. What did it mean to you to have this opportunity? What did it represent for you looking forward in your life? For one, achievement um, f being human and loved the destruction cost them the key things they need to get out of homelessness social security card it took me forever to get these things there were no complaints filed by nearby residents or businesses code enforcement took action after a city employee saw a fence made from recycled pallets and reported it. North Las Vegas code enforcement officials got a warrant that gave them the go ahead to remove, demolish and dispose of all non permitted or deteriorated structures. North Las Vegas declined multiple requests for an on camera interview, providing a statement instead, which says in part by flagrantly ignoring codes and regulations, the property owner created an unsafe, unsanitary condition on the property to the extent that it was deemed uninhabitable. We had first aid kits, we had water, they were going to install showers. Lankowski says he tried to find the process for zoning and permits. And we ran into a, a dead end because there is no zoning. There is no zoning for what we're trying to do. With donated materials, he and his group of volunteers decided to build first, ask forgiveness later. The need is just too great out here. He was hit with several code violations in April of this year, saying his group was fixing some and appealing others, expecting due process, but getting demolition instead. I'm angry, I'm hurt, mad. It's sad. The whole damn thing is just sad. You take us from something and put us back. It's, it's sad. It's just sad. Having consulted with community supported shelters in Eugene, Lankowski thought North Las Vegas would see he could make something similar work for the homeless here. Walls, roof, carpeting, everything was right. It was right. 
13 investigates talked with Eugene Mayor Lucy Venice. She says tiny home sites there have not blown up into shanty towns or become a major safety problem. The opposite has been the result because we've made a commitment as a city to invest in the facilities that we need in order to enable these to be safe places. An investment Mayor Venice says actually saves tax dollars. Just health cost alone, just visits to the emergency room alone, when you consider the cost of uh, public safety and the cost for public works to clean up encampments. We have to make those investments now because the costs just keep building. It doesn't go away. Mayor Venice says it's also a huge relief for law enforcement. This is absolutely what our police department wants. Uh, these sites, once they're established, they're clean, they're safe, they're well managed. There is no negative impact on the community at all. It's important to note, officials here tell us the city's homeless outreach team has connected with Angela, Savage and Allen. All they give you is b****. Excuse my language. Angela is beyond frustrated with the seemingly endless wait for real help and approval for housing. Well, we're going to put you on this list and we're going to come check on you. But it's always pending. They give you a granola bar and a bottle of water and just have a nice day, you know? Advocates say that points to the overall problem of how homelessness is approached in the valley. They need a leg up to be more productive citizens, and it sounds like the city cut that leg off at the knee. Absolutely. Um, you know, they need a not a handout, but a hand up, and that's what we're trying to do is help lift them up and what the local government's approach is, unfortunately, is kicking people while they're down you know, by criminalizing homelessness, making it illegal to um, be homeless. No one expects tiny homes to be the solution for everyone. It's just one piece in a mosaic. It's not just a hope and a prayer. It is confidence in human beings that if you give them an opportunity and you support them, they can begin to build a better life for themselves. A message the folks who briefly lived here hope our city will take to heart. We had so many dreams and opportunities and plans and, and they just took it. Like, you know, we're trash and that's how I feel they, 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 they're treating us. Like we're trash and we don't deserve to have a place to live. In addition to North Las Vegas, we reached out to the city of Las Vegas and NDOT. Both were involved with destruction of shelters near I-15. You can read their statements on our website at KTNV.com. We also reached out to elected officials who say this is an opportunity to find a process to make tiny homes for the homeless work in Clark County. Darcy Spears, 13 Investigates.